get a grip. And I thank God today, the devil don't have me bound. He think he got me bound, but he's a liar, and I'm calling him a liar on this day. And it says also, become unto holiness as becoming, the, and this is for the age woman. Likewise, they be in behavior as becometh holiness and not false accusers and not giving too much room. Teachers, t teachers of good things. Now I thank God for the older woman that's here that's older than me. But I tell you, I'm not all that young myself. But I thank God that I'm old enough to have grandkids. And I thank God that I was able to teach my children about the word and about Lord. And I thank God for my parents today. You know, and they said, if you train them up in the way they go as a child, then the work won't depart. But I thank God because my children are blessings to me. I thank God even for my older son that's here today, even my daughter and all. You know, because truly, he's an inspiration to me. And they know the uphill battle that I've been through. But I know can't nobody tell me how much I love God and can't tell me how much I pray. And that's a privilege to be able to pray because, you know, there are some people that sometimes just can't even pray to God. They get killed. And here we all got freedom here and don't even want to learn how to pray. Don't take the time out to pray and don't even take the time out to say thank you, Jesus. But, you know, you can't live day by day unless you thank God. You know, God don't need you. You need God. Yeah. And we were created. Yeah. We were created yeah. to serve the Lord. Yeah. When God made man, he made the man to exalt him. That he would be magnified. Yeah. Not that we could just sit around and just enjoy it at a leisure. You know, you're taking everything for granted. But you better stop taking everything for granted. Because it don't work like that. God don't work like that. But much is, much is given, much is required. You know what? But when you go down into baptism and you come up, you come up into a newness of life. All those old things that you've done was all passed away. But then you put on Jesus' righteousness because that's what it is. When you come up out of that water, you represent Jesus. Jesus is the one to die for you, don't you forget. And don't forget that blood. That blood is so powerful. There's power in the blood. That blood can protect you. The hands all around you. I plead the blood of Jesus on me every day. I plead the blood of Jesus on this congregation, on my pastor and first day, because I know the devil can't do nothing with the blood. He trembles when you plead that blood. Start pleading the blood. I thank you, Jesus. You know, he's just so magnificent. You know, I started going back to therapy. I was finished with therapy. And there's a lady named Miss Lynn who comes in here and was in the wheelchair. But see, when they had put me out of wheel out of therapy before I was done. And you know, but the enemy wanted to make me feel like I had, couldn't walk no more, couldn't do this and do that. But I'm here to tell you that he's using me. And I went back there because you know what? The second time around, now that I'm back there, everybody can tell me. Everybody, how you doing, Miss Jamie? How, you know, before I didn't hardly know anybody who worked in there. But now that I'm there, they know who I am. They know the kind of life that I live. They see God in me. And people be asking me, well, how do you feel today? Or what do you do for this situation? But you know what? I always give them the word of God. And my husband's always their minister. Because there are young people as well as old. There are babies that come up in there. But you know what? I just still got to uplift Jesus and let him be exalted. Let him be magnified. And he's going to be magnified here today because I know what it's like to be holy. You have to walk upright. You have to dress right. You have to know that you know that you know that you know. And I, I just thank God that you know he's just using me his way. I don't care what nobody say about me. I don't care what nobody think about me because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And I know who Christ Jesus is. God, you know, I can say all kinds of things about you, but names can't hurt you. They can stick some stones to break your bones. That'll make no sense. You know, and you have grown people sitting up and throwing sticks. But you know what? That day is going to be over too because God sees everything. He don't miss nothing. He sits high and he looks low. And I know, like I said, he's here. So it don't matter to me what anybody would say. When I got a good word for him, everybody I say, you know, serve the Lord and serve the Lord with gladness. Serve him in your heart. You got to have a pure heart. And you got to love one another. Because God said if you don't love your, love your brother, how could you love him who you never see? We got to stop having all this backbiting and coming in here with all this unholiness. God is not pleased with that. We got to get together in one accord and all of us be one so God can be mad. So great things can happen here. God, you're just so worthy. You're just so worthy. I thank you. Lord, I just thank you. I see my help coming now. I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel
the Holy Spirit. Because if I could get up right now and just jump, and I would just jump for joy. Some of y'all just need to quit sitting down and stand up and jump. I was so glad to see the, the Spirit moving this morning all around here. Because you know what? Jesus understands my problem. And if you take the acronym of that, that means jump. Jump, jump, jump. Jesus understands my problems. Not just my problems. He understands your problems too. He knows what you're going through before you even go through it. Because he allows you to go through it. Only to make you stronger. And when you think that you're getting weak, there's no weakness in God. God is not weak. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's when you get your strength every day. Start getting in the word. Start going and, and looking into the word and standing on God's promises. And he has many, many promises. He already said he would never leave you and forsake you. So what you afraid of? He's here. He's here right now. Lord, I just thank you. You know, now since I've been down here at First Baptist, I've seen and heard a lot of things. You know what? But I'm proud to be able to call this my church home. I thank God for the pastor. I thank God because he's using me. I thank God because he gives us the ability to be able to go out into the byways and byways. And I thank God that he used his ministry staff that he has behind him. That this word will go forth and his banner will not trail the ground. Jesus is the banner. And Jesus is the banner of love. And I have much love. Much, much love for everybody. And even from the oldest to the littlest. And God is just so good. I keep saying God's good because I got can't help it. Because when you know God's been good to you, you're just going to keep proclaiming it. And you'll say it everywhere. You know. You know, I've been going through a lot of different trials and tribulations like we all do. But what we're going to do. You gonna sit back and say, woe is me, whine and cry about it? Or you gonna say, oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy on me, direct me, Lord, speak to me, speak to me, Jesus. Which way do you want me to go? What should I do? But Jesus also says, what shall I render unto the Lord? What are you rendering to the Lord today? For all his many sacrifices and benefits towards you. Remember, it's the blood. It was the blood of Calvary. Picture that. You wouldn't go on the cross. Would you go on the cross with one of your kids? No, but I bet if you want to, you can go to the cross with Jesus Christ. Because he's the only one that can do anything for you. He's the only one that can intercess for you between him and God the Father. You know, we have to quit playing these games. Because God's getting tired of sticking games. He gives you a chance by his grace and his mercy because God don't have to do anything for you. But it's our obedience. That's where the key is, being obedient. And if you don't know about obedience and know what about, about obeying God and his word, you need to go back and look in that word and find out everything it is about obedience because obedience is the main key. Then you need to get down on your knees and pray. You know, you can pray many times a day. Some people just pray one time a day. Some people don't pray no time a day. But I thank God that I am an intercessor. I thank God that I love praying. And I thank God I love looking at the scriptures and I love learning. Because God said you're forever learning. Just because I'm an evangelist, I don't know everything. But the Holy Spirit can teach me. And if you can't see him, you can't hear him, but he will teach you. You have to ask him, but you have to be willing. But you also got to position yourself. And when you position yourself and align yourself up with God and the word, all things can happen for you. Then you forget about all those things and troubles that you have. You can go through the storms with a smile. It ain't going to rain all the time. Sunshine is going to be sunshine all the time. But you will have a brighter day. Lord, let the Lord lead you. Ask the Lord, take me to that rock. Well, who's the rock? The rock is Jesus Christ. And you can move some of these mountains. Like it says in Mark 11 chapter. Those mountains will be being cast into the sea. You can move a whole lot of things. Because God has given us the power. He's given us the power to tread upon all the serpents of the earth. You have to realize who you are when you're in Christ. There's nothing like having the power of Jesus Christ. Because when you have the power, you can do a whole lot more than when you don't have the power. And I thank God I can just do. Ooh. My, my, my. If you only knew about the power. The power of the blood of Jesus. The power that God has given us to use. And we won't even use it. But that's okay. Because God is still going to move upon you. Because he got his grace. 
But don't just move because he gives you grace. Move because you want to do something for him, for yourself. Move for respect. God requires of us a lot. We're going to have to be holy. God don't like shocking up. God don't like you taking a bribe in him and me being unmarried. And I have to speak about that. You know, you want God to move something, you better be holy. God wants to use you, but you better be able to be used. What have you done for the Lord lately? There's so many different sermons that I could preach. But you know, I had to ask the Lord, Lord, which one do you want me to preach? And now I've been, I ain't going to say I've been battling because there's a whole lot of things that can be preached. You know, I had one sermon I thought might be 99 and a half, won't do. Because God said we're striving for perfection. And he's not going to accept anything but you striving to be perfect. Because he is perfect. You know, and like I said, he's holy. Are you ready to put on your righteousness? Don't you get tired of being sick and tired and keep going round and round and round in the circles? I know I did. But you know what? God's still been merciful for me. Boy, I tell you. Hmm. Then there was another sermon I thought I might preach. Blessed are swords. And I said, you know what, God? You have given us many press, uh, promises. And yes, he is the blesser. And yes, he can be, we can feel assured because he's around us. Because we learn how to stand on those promises that he promised us. Call them up. Speak them up. You can't fail because God never fails. And God is a God that can't lie. He said, heaven and earth will pass before one tittle of his word would lie, will fail. So if you got God in you, and you know Jesus died for you, and you know you got the power through the blood, then what's wrong with you? I challenge you today to ask you, what's wrong with you today? If kids can go to school and learn, and they can sit there and learn the lessons that the teachers are teaching, then we as adults can also go to school with Jesus school to learn what God's trying to tell us. Because it starts as God is trying to tell us something. And all you're going to do is keep going round and around and around and around in a circle until you start to get it right. Because when you get to pass the test and do it right, then you go on to your next test. You might not get an A, you might not get a B, but the point is that you pass that test. Because God's going to let you stay right there in your mess until you do. Oh, I thank you. I thank you that I, I love the Lord with all my heart. I thank the Lord for my mother and father who taught me. Boy, I thank God for the powerful family that I had. Because you know what? It's, it's a lot of things could happen out to you, to you when you leave home and you get out on your own. I remember when I first moved to Virginia. And I, didn't, I always wanted to move to Virginia. I even wanted to go to college here. But the whole time, my father kept saying, no, you don't need to go to Virginia. He didn't want me to come to Virginia, and I couldn't understand why. But you know what? After he passed, one of his words, he spoke to my mother to tell me, go ahead and tell her, go ahead to Virginia. And I came down here to Virginia to a city I never even heard of, Newport News, Virginia. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Newport News, Virginia. I know you hear a lot of things on the news, but there's a whole lot of repenting that need to be done in Newport News. Newport News has crime so, rates so high, it don't make sense. One day I was coming home from work, and I went home, changed my clothes, on my way, getting ready to go to Bible study at church. Had my briefcase with my Bible that my father had left to me, and had all my church stuff with me, standing at the bus stop, ready to go to church. And I was there, and there was a whole group of people all outside, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I had two young men come up to me. Both of them had guns. One had a gun up to the side of my head. The other one had a gun to my side. Said, give me everything you got. And I couldn't have time to sit there and pray, but I knew how to call the name Jesus. And you know what? I gave them what I had. And then they robbed me for my little bus fare that I paid a dollar for these cent for. And I just laughed because they didn't know what they had in them briefcases. But see, they couldn't kill me for not having the money. But one thing they did have was a powerful word of God. With my Bible, all parts God. But I knew how to call the name Jesus. Jesus could move just that quick. You don't have to be just just uh, with the people.